Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. Steampunk, as I hope you all know, is that wonderful juxtaposition of sci-fi, fantasy, and history. Most of the time I talk about fiction, occasionally I'll delve off into non-fiction, into one of my other passions, which is history. Now this is the time of year here in America where a lot of our holidays are historically based. We have Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving. A lot of these his historical holidays are kind of in jeopardy. We have a lot of attacks and basically deplatforming of our favorite holidays and uh, with vil vilification of some of our old time heroes. That's one of the reasons I decided to do this particular video on why history matters. It seems kind of like history has, has fallen out of favor, especially here in America. And we just hear distressing statistics of how few people really know about really important things like uh, when and how World War II started, what was it about, uh, what was the Civil War about, why was the South fighting to secede, what side was Lincoln on, uh, things like that. And you see this kind of historical ignorance in these mobs who pull down statues, some who actually opposed slavery, and things like that. So. It's really important, I mean, not that they should be pulling any statues down, because history, I think, to me, history is sacred. But, in any case, it would at least behoove them to know a little bit about what they're complaining about. And another thing that, that was an impetus for me to do this was, I heard millennials say that history was depressing because of all the racism that was involved in it. Well, you know, racism is a pretty vague term these days. But you got to say that human history has been replete with such things, and probably always will be. So, one of the things the study of history does is it gives us a little bit of a perspective on that, and what is realistic and what is not realistic for human, for human beings. So, first of all, I'd like to say, what is good about history? What's good about reading historical nonfiction? What benefits will we get from it? I think primarily four. First of all, to learn from our past mistakes. And this is the quote that I love to, have loved to repeat, and it's so often repeated that it's almost, almost annoying. But uh, Spanish philosopher George Santillana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And there were some pretty nasty things in the past that we don't want to repeat. Secondly, conversely from the first, we want to gain wisdom from the ancients. Sometimes the old people were pretty smart. They had some wisdom that, that we should really consider. A lot of times, like for example, when the Founding Fathers were thinking up the first government for America, they consulted the works of the ancient philosophers to try and see what uh, knowledge, what ideas they could get from it. And I, I think it did help a lot. Third thing, and also related, is to get, to, to get inspiration and perspective. First perspective, I probably should have said perspective first because that allows us to see, you know, are what is what we're experiencing now all that different than what's gone before? Are we overreacting perhaps, underreacting, <laughs> that kind of thing? And because uh, there's always this weird tendency to want to think that our, our problems are unique. And perhaps they are. I mean, I know under, I mean, technology does change things. It seems to be the only thing that changes things. And one of these days I'll talk about that because um, it was a speech I heard from Barry Goldwater, speechwriter Carl Hess, long ago. But that's what he said, technology is the only thing that changes human history. Nevertheless, human nature does not change. At least until we get around to genetically engineering us, it won't. So, it gives us perspective to study history. It also can also give us inspiration. Uh, we can find out the good things our people have done, our country has done, and so on, and we can be inspired. We can feel good about ourselves because of that. And it may be irrational, it may be illogical, but, it, but it's true. People do feel that way sometimes. Fourth, and not least important, history is entertaining. It is actually fun. If you don't, you know, think of it as some boring course where you have to memorize names and dates and things like that, it's actually quite entertaining. There's actually a lot of uh, battle and conflict and, and excitement and, uh, you know, narrow escapes, that kind of thing, in human history. I had a teacher uh, in uh, junior high school who kind of instilled 
my excitement of history. And he was one of the few, few ones that did it right. So, without further ado, I do want to go briefly into a little bit of promotion for my own, for my own work, as I always do. And uh, uh, my first book that I wrote, self-published, is called Centrifugal Force, which is about a revolution of nerds, essentially. And it may not be my most smoothly written book, but I think it's entertaining, and I think it's, it's especially germane these days when we have so many restrictions on our liberty. And so I, I highly recommend it. I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the description below. Now the, now the next thing I'm going to go through, now that I've said that it's important to read historical fiction, nonfiction, what are the types of nonfiction that we can, we can choose from? And I have read a lot of them, and, and I've just tried to put a few examples in place in this talk. First of all, we have biographies and memoirs. Now that's the most concentrated, the most personal, the, the most microscopic type of history. Because what's smaller than an individual? And yet, this can be kind of the most inspiring. And because we can look at uh, great people who did great things. Uh, for example, and, and this includes memoirs, it's both biographies written by other people or autobiographies or memoirs. And uh, one of the ones I read recently was the first volume of The Life of George Washington by Washington Irving. He's, a, he's the guy who wrote uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Brian Winkle. So he was definitely an American classic guy. And it was very, very instructive uh, seeing that um, all the things George Washington went through in his early days, where he could, how he got to be you know, the commander-in-chief during the American Revolution. There are more volumes. Couldn't find them on Gutenberg.org, unfortunately, but I do intend to seek them out. Another great one was uh, Tesla, The Life and Times of an Electric Messiah by Nigel Cawthorn. And I talked about this a little before on my video entirely about Tesla. Genius, invented a lot of things that made our lives better, including uh, alternating current, invited a lot of wacky, in, uh, wacky inventions that make people think he's some sort of supernatural genius. Perhaps he was, perhaps he wasn't. Again, a very fascinating and inspiring biography. Number two, the second the second type of thing, and this is in no particular order, historical essays. This is also very personal. This is something that's typically written by a person back in history and what their view of the current times were. And that gives you a really window into the way people, people looked at things. One of the ones I read recently were the Federalist Papers by Alexander Hamilton and James Madison. I think John Jay contributed a bit to that as well. I was inspired by the play Hamilton because they mentioned that. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting. They talk about why we should ratify the Constitution, and they're giving all the examples from past history and antiquity. And some pretty, pretty interesting thoughts. I mean, Hamilton and Madison in particular were very learned men, and they knew so much more than the average person does now. And, and again, just seeing this gives you a better understanding of where America started. Another one was, um, to go way back when, The Art of War by the Chinese General Sun Tzu. That's a, another very fascinating view on, on uh, human history. And I, I understand this book is so seminal that it's actually taught in military academies in the present day, even though it's like a 3,000 year old book. And uh, again, I will kind of be concentrating on American history because I'm an American. But I will often, sometimes, delve into other spheres. The third type of historical nonfiction that I think is, is uh, important to look into, and I don't know if there's really a term for this, so I invented one. I'm calling it a focused history, which is a history of a particular event or a particular institution or idea, and uh, typically in a narrow amount of time. You can do is very, very... Uh, so it's a very, very narrow time, like a few days, for example. Uh, the book Black Hawk Down by Mark Bowden. Now, that was a battle in Somalia that took place only a few decades ago. Yet, sometime in the future, that will be history. And again, a lot, a lot to be learned, a lot of tragedy and so on that, that took place there. If you, want to go, if you want to go back a little further, the history of the atomic bomb, which was a, a cool, kind of a... Um, American classic or American heritage, something I it was like a kid's book that I got when I was in school. 
uh, and very good introduction to that, the history of the Manhattan Project and stuff. So there are a lot of these books that are available for kids, where, where it's easy enough for them to understand. So very focused, very focused history on a particular thing or event or you know maybe a particular war or something. Now on, on a little bit of longer view, you can say what I'm calling a, like a national history or a long history. And the two examples I have here are written by the same person, British historian Paul Johnson. Uh, very fascinating guy, um, very, um, very learned. <laughs> and the two books are The History of Christianity and The History of Jews. And uh, these are very, these span over thousands of years, and uh, some very, it shows how these religions shaped our culture here in the West. And you can't go wrong by, un by understanding this a little bit better. He gets kind of deep sometimes, but I learned a lot, even having come in from a Christian background. There was a lot of stuff I had no clue about how it, it came on you know, in the early days. I'm also a big fan of what we call revisionist history. Now that gets a lot of that gets a lot of um, bad press because people are talking about things like Holocaust denial and so on. It's not. I mean, it's not that. I mean, it's not just. It's not just uh, denying something that the vast majority of people believe is true. It's actually going back and and looking for the causes of things and whether suppositions might be false. For example. This is one of my favorite one, Day of Deceit by Robert, Robert Stinnett, which posits the uh, theory that the Roosevelt administration knew that the attack on Pearl Harbor was coming, and they let it happen because, uh, because they had to get the American public uh, willing to go to war, because we were so anti-war from the bad experiences of World War I that we just absolutely wouldn't do it, and he thought it was important to defeat the Nazis and so on, so... If you let their ally, the Japanese, attack us, <laughs> uh, and there he brings out a lot of inf evidence for this. Now it's very controversial, but it's still fascinating. Another one recently um, that I read was uh, God's Battalions by Rodney Stark, and this was a defense of the Crusades. The Crusades get a lot of bad press these days, and it's, it's viewed as Western imperialism. Excuse me, Western imperialism. Even though the Muslim world, Islamic empires, they were very imperialistic too, so there was really little to no difference between the two, but Stark uh, paints the picture that there were justifications for it, and that they, um, and the Christian kings and so on, they at least had good intentions of recapturing the Holy Land, and they did hold it for like 200 years. Again, very fascinating. I'm going to distinguish this next one a little bit from the previous one, and uh, though it's similar, I, I'll call this historical analysis. This is it can often be hist can often be controversial as well, but it takes a bit of a longer view. Uh, for example, one that's very been very popular over the years, and I read it as well, was called Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond, who is an ornithologist, that is a bird scientist. But he got some interesting ideas about the history of mankind and to try and explain why some societies became much more advanced than others. He's got some interesting theories. Again, they're controversial. They're not accepted by everyone, but he does bring out some really good points, especially about uh, disease, which really, I mean, which really decimated the New World. And if, if that hadn't been the case, if uh, Native Americans had had uh, basically any resistance to smallpox, history would have been really different for America. Uh, and so it's very interesting. Another one that's very unknown, but I enjoyed it. Fight, Flight, Fraud, The History of Taxation by Charles Adams. And I believe he was, he was in, was um, associated, associated with like the Taxpayers Union or some uh, conservative group like that. Very fascinating history of taxation <laughs> and in various aspects in various societies. And, and interestingly enough, he also, you know, one of the things I remember from it, because it was a while since I read it, was the idea that uh, the Aztecs, part of the reason they fell to the Spanish was because the people they ruled hated them so much because their brutal taxation. Well, not just in money and gold, but also in uh, young people's sacrifice, I guess, to the, their gods. But it was an interesting, very, very fascinating and enlightening book. 
finally, my final category I'm going to put in here, because I love lists, you know I do, and uh, this one is what I call a popular history. And this is more, this is less for enlightenment and more for entertainment. And two in particular that I enjoyed greatly, one was Under the Black Flag by David Cordingly, and it's about pirates and the history of piracy in the Western world, how it got started, and uh, how it ended, and what the life of a pirate was really like. And some of this is a little different than you might suspect. The other one is called Dracula, Prince of Many Faces, by Raymond T. McNally and Radu R. Florescu. Florescu? And that latter name is a Romanian name, which makes sense because uh, Dracula was based on a Romanian prince called... Vlad the Impaler. That's because he liked to torture people to death by impaling them on spikes. He was so vicious and bloodthirsty that he was the, he was partly the model for Dracula the Vampire. And so his life story sheds a lot on the vampire legend. All of these genres of historical nonfiction, the subgenres, as I like to say, can help us in these various ways in which I described earlier on. They can help us learn and prevent our mistakes, uh, you know, from you know, getting into bad wars, for example, or, or submitting to too much taxation, that kind of thing. They can, they can inspire us from, like, the examples of, of famous men like George Washington or, or Tesla, or famous women too, of course. I just didn't have an example. And, uh, and uh, the wisdom of people like Aristotle and Plato, Plato uh, also can give us perspective on, on wars and, especially important today, epidemics of the past. Uh, finally, it entertains us. And that is a lot of, well, all of this I found entertaining because I'm, I'm a history nerd. But nonetheless, I think that there's a lot of this stuff that normies can, and, and can appreciate as well. And the more the better, the, the, the more the merrier, the more people that understand, especially we Americans who tend to be a little lazy and focused on the present, especially we Americans, if we understand our heritage a little bit better, I think we'll be more likely to get along, and to uh, understand where the other group is coming from. And I think that will very much benefit us as a nation. So this has been my talk on why history matters. Uh, types of nonfiction books that you can read and the benefits accruing from reading thereof. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you like uh, view videos on nonfiction topics as well as fiction? Let me know. Please like and subscribe to help us get out get out the good word. I've noticed that my views have been a little lagging lately, so I really, really, really want to get more people watching. Because I have fun making these, I want to share these with the world. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.